How you doing? This is John and welcome to John's Long Box. Today I'm breaking out one of the big guns in my collection and you'll see why shortly. But this is Strange Tales 110. Uh, this is 1963, 12 cents. It's Comics Code Authority. This is, And this is really the only thing that's wrong with it, is this little ding over here. But well, otherwise it's in pretty good condition. Not the best, but it's good enough condition for me. But it, it, in this time period, Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, was the most popular member of the Fantastic Four, and as such, he was given a starring role in the Strange Tales comic. Strange Tales was, was an anthology comic that predated uh, Marvel. It was uh, part of uh, Timely Atlas, and then in 1963, Marvel Comics became Marvel Comics. They changed the name, and they just a lot of titles still are out. It was notably Strange Tales, and... Uh, Instead of being like an anthology science fiction horror comic, it, they kind of just split up. And one of the, one of the uh, stories was given to uh, the Human Torch. I think it was uh, Strange Tales One Hundred, and this was the home of Steve Ditko. Steve Ditko had a lot had a lot of the artwork that was in, in Strange Tales. So here we have. This was just classic uh, comic book covers at the time. A lot of look at look at how many word balloons are on the cover. That's something you don't really see anymore. But this is half of the Frightful Four. And I forget if the if the Frightful Four were a thing at this point, or if it was, or if they were just a, you know, just two guys. But this is uh, the Wizard, and the Wizard is like super intelligent, but you know, in like Reed Richards class. But he's just like a loser, you know. He's like loser Reed Richards. He's he, he's he he makes all these gadgets stuff like that, but he really just has dumb plots and dumb dumb plans stuff like that. And one of the dumb things he did is he's partnered up with Paste Pot Pete, and Paste Pot Pete is this guy. Look at that guy. He carries around a pot full of paste, and he has a glue gun, and he squirts you with glue. He later becomes the Trapster, and these two become uh, two members of the Frightful Four, like an evil version of the Fantastic Four. And it's so it's it, it's you know uh, the Trapster, the Wizard, Sandman, and uh, the, the fourth member is always like rotating. It was it was originally Medusa of of the Inhumans, and I think that Medusa originally wasn't. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll get to that one, one of these comics. One of the, when I get to it. But here we go. I'm rambling for two minutes. I didn't even open the comic yet. So let's open the comic. And I'm being very ginger with this because this is, like I said. So here we have, look at this ad. Start your own business. Electronic appliance repair. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Was the Indicia. Strange Tales published by Vista Publications. Office Publications. Man, by Vista Publications. 1963. Uh, did I, I said 1963, right? So here we have the splash page. Here's the credits. Stan Lee. The plot, the script, H. E. Huntley. I, I don't know who that is. H. H. E. Huntley. I, I. I don't. Er, okay, I don't know. Art is Dick Ayers. Letter is John Duffy. Look at that. So this is Dick Ayers. And here, what, what is he? Yeah, this is just Johnny Storm. Uh, just daydream, and here he is. Look, flame on. And I, I. I said this a few times. That I, I was a dumb kid and I thought that uh, Johnny Storm had to save Flame On to activate his powers for, as a kid. I remember arguing with, with somebody about that. They're like, no, nah, I think you're wrong. And I'm like, no, nah, I think I'm right. So here he is. He's doing exercising in the Fantastic Four equivalent of the Danger Room. So the, what, what they call it, the Fantastic Group. Flame off! And here he is, just looking through his diary. Uh, at this point, uh, I think Johnny Storm was uh, living in a in a like a suburb home, Centerville or something like that. Like, I think it was like a, a Connecticut suburb. And uh, he would spend, he would split his time between uh, Centerville and, and Manhattan, where, where he lived with the Fantastic Four. So he, look, look, look at this bizarre coincidence that he's going through his scrapbook and he's looking at the wizard and thinking about Pace Pot Pete and the wizard. The wizard. So of course, you know, he's, I think they just fill it in pages, you know. So he's thinking about the, is the invisible woman and, you know, reminiscing all, all, all of this nonsense from past stuff. Competent art, not the best, you know. I, I think they're like aping Jack Kirby, so, you know, may, maybe he this guy's not drawing his, his normal style. And Oh, okay, I f kind of forgot this was in here. But this is uh, another uh, interesting thing. This is one page of text. It's a story, Silent Stranger. It's just a story. And why do they have this? Because in order to qualify for a, a magazine rate for subscriptions, they have to have a, at least two pages of text, no ads and no pictures. And that's the origin of the letters page. That's why comic books had letter pages, because it was just an easy way to, uh, 
to, to meet this criteria by having letters published. So uh, I, I don't even know if there's a letter page in, in this particular. We'll find out together. Just give me one evening and I'll teach you to hypnotize easily. Oh, geez. I, I, I don't want to look at that because that guy's going to hypnotize me. And, I, I, and then I'll start revealing secrets. I'll dox myself. I'll, you know, give up the numbers to my gold, my vault of gold bullion. So, of course, in, in one of those coincidences that could only happen in a comic book, Johnny Storm was reminiscing about the wizard and Peace Pot Pete. And what, lo and behold, what happens? Peace Pot Pete is breaking the wizard, the wizard, I keep saying wizard, wizard out of prison. So, here, look at, look at that. He's just gluing him up. So, it's kind of like a... Uh, a mega version of, of Spider-Man's web shooters, you know, if you think about it. And I read someplace that uh, law enforcement was experimenting with, like, guns like this that would spray foam on people that would harden and uh, as a non-lethal non -lethal means of, of apprehension. But the problem was there was no protection against uh, people being suffocated, you know, so they, they, they got to come up with a porous solution. So here's the rest of the Fantastic Four. Oh, be careful, Johnny. The wizard and Pacepot Pete escaped from jail. And, uh, you know, here here he is. Uh, I don't believe it. Johnny's no criminal. Oh, oh, that's right. So what happens is is the wizard is uh, impersonating Johnny Storm. He's impersonating the Human Torch. And now the Human Torch is being, blamed, is being uh, blamed for crimes. Keep in mind that Johnny Storm's identity is public. So the people in his school are, are busting his chops. Or they're rooting for him. Or they're saying... You know, he didn't do it or whatever. So, so here he has the wizard. That's one of his inventions. Is he made a flame suit and he has like a thruster on the back so he could fly, and he's just, you know, terrorizing people. And what do they do? Johnny Storm. I I think he tricks them into going into this this fun house or something like that. And since they're not adept at using flame powers, Johnny Storm wears them down and, and tricks them and arrests them. No big shakes. I, I think this is just, you know, like a, what do you call it? Like a ho-hum filler of, of, of a story. So there you go with that. Let's look at this. Reward, 9000 almost $10,000 for this coin. Liberty, 1804 Okay. Will you work Saturday mornings for 5 to $20 extra? Boy, will I. And here we have just a, 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 a story. So let's see. Plot and script, Stanley, Larry Lieber, art, and inking, Matt Fox, lettering, Artie Simic. Larry Lieber is Stanley's brother. Stan Lee's real name is Stanley Lieber. And his brother is Larry Lieber. So there you go. So this is, uh, Stanley gave him an idea, an idea and Larry is, is, is writing it and drawing it. And you know what? I like this art. That's, that's a pretty cool splash page. Um, they're looking up at spaceships. I just I don't know. I just I just kind of like it. You know, it it's it it doesn't seem like Marvel artwork to me, but it, it almost seems like Golden Age artwork. But you know what? We're not too far away from the Golden Age, so there you go. But it it, it it's it's different. Um, I I recognize it immediately as not Marvel style artwork. But then again, this is the early age of of Marvel. This is 1963. They're really the the first Fantastic Four comic was was a, I forget 61, 62. So, you know, we're only three years into the Marvel age of comics. So, whatever. So here they, the, the, these guys, they find a planet. They fly to the planet. They land on the planet. Look at it. Look at it. I I keep mentioning comic book pet peeves. And I'm just going to say, like, just a pet peeve in general, science fiction pet peeve, whether it be TV, movies, or science, or, or comic books, is whenever you go to an alien world and the aliens just look like humans. I, I understand it's, it's budget constraints. But, uh... You know the aliens just just look like humans, so this is kind of but but that's the point of this comic is that they're, they're being this story rather they're being deceived by these hulkish brutes that just stand in there being all dumb. So, but but look at that, that's cool. It, but uh, I I read E.E. Uh, e. E. Smith's uh, The Lensman, and some of the aliens were just so freaking alien that it, it was really cool. Like the, the you know an Italian, there was a, two different. The humans landed on a, on a on a planet, and then the aliens also landed on a planet. But they were so different, with such different mentalities and different different needs and desires that they just ignored each other on the planet because they they couldn't communicate. They and they the areas of interest were so different. I thought that was pretty cool. So 
they land on this planet, they check it out, and they're just like, ah, they're just, it's just dumb brutes, so let's leave them alone, you know, we don't want to interfere in this stupid brutes uh, civilization, you know, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, we, we, we have, uh, you know, uh, primitive people on Earth, and we don't mess with them, let them develop on their own, so they're being all noble, and the prime directive, and they leave, and then when they leave, they find, ah, oh, the Earthlings depart very well, you know, who, who would, we didn't need, you know, at least, they weren't very intelligent, or they they couldn't they couldn't hear our thoughts. So it turns out that these dumb brutes are so advanced that all their needs are met through mental telepathy. They just kind of sluggishly walk like zombies, but they telekinetically pull nutrients from the earth through their feet, and they t- communicate. So you know they use their mental abilities to regulate their body temperatures. So they don't need anything. You know that's how advanced they are. They're they're like almost like the Watcher in that, and. Uh, they're kind of laughing at us who leave because uh, we couldn't recognize how powerful and, and advanced they were. Hypno coin. Oh God, I, this is going to hypnotize me too. And then I'm going to walk around my house like like that. I, I'll actually put on a dress and, and high heel shoes and do it too, because that's how sinister the hypno coin is. So here's the second page of the text, finishing that story. And for the life of me, I can't remember the story, and I'm not going to re- read it now. Oh, okay. Here's the, the these. Hokey Gizmo ads. I just love these. I, I just love checking these out. With God, all things. Oh, so a free cross. That's that's something you don't see. A thousand magic tricks. Stamp collecting. Better U.S. approvals. You know, 25 different big value. Oh, stamps. Oh, see, they're all, these are all stamps. Poems wanted. It's pretty cool. Pretty interesting. And here, ta-da. This is why I wanted to showcase this comic. This is the first appearance of Doctor Strange. So, we have, this is the first appearance of Doctor Strange, uh, story by Stan Lee, art by Steve Ditko, lettering by Terry Szczyk, and I don't know how to pronounce it, and I really don't know who he is. So, this is Steve Ditko, Stan Lee, this is their second creation together, their first creation being Spider-Man, and this is the first appearance of Doctor Strange, and I have to say, I must have read this story over and over and over again. Um. When I was a kid, I went to school, and the school was only like a half block away from the, the, the public library. And I don't know why, but uh, I guess I was a nerd, but I used to love going to the public library, and they had a section of comic books. And one of them was like a little collection of, of early Marvel comic books. So it was like early Fantastic Fours, early Hulks, early Doctor Strange, and all of these were... So I read these over and over and over as a kid. I did not have this as a kid. This 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 I, I bought later on as, as an adult. I think I went to a Comic-Con in New York City and got it. So here he is. Look at that. This is the first appearance of Doctor Strange. And look at that amulet. That amulet is the uh, the amulet of Agmato. That's not the Eye of Agmato. He gets the Eye of Agmato later. But this is the amulet of Ag- Agmato. So this is... He's got to level up for that. So here we have... Uh, I don't know. I just want to say, look at that design. I, 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 I think Stan... Uh, Jack... Ah, oh, my brain. I, I think my brain is crazy. I, I, I think Steve Ditko is a master of design. Just, just so good. And Doctor Strange really hasn't changed that much over, over the years. So here we have this guy's go away. He can't sleep. He can't sleep. Look, look at just look at the water. On, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I could go on and on, but that just such a. You see the torment in this guy. The, the motion. I just, I just love it. And, and the funny thing is, hearing myself say this stuff, I'm, I'm like amazed because uh, when Steve Ditko returned to Marvel in the late 70s early 80s I hated him and I've since learned that that Steve went back out of necessity but he wasn't happy with it so he, he literally famously didn't do his best work you know and uh, other other people who had a lot of respect for him would try to ink it and make it better but there's only so much you could do so I hated Steve Ditko but I would read these old Spider-Mans and old Doctor Stranges, and back then I didn't pay attention to the artwork. I didn't pay attention to the credits. So I, I, di- I didn't know that I also loved Steve Ditko, <laughs> even though I, I hated Steve Ditko at, at the time because of uh, what he was doing in like current issues of Micronauts and Marvel Spotlight and stuff like that. So it was kind of funny. Then I was like, wait a minute, this is the same guy? What happened to him? And I learned that he, he you know, he, he vowed never to work for Marvel again. He went back humbly and dragged his feet but uh I, i'm a little disappointed in that because i feel if you're gonna do something whether you know don't give it your best or don't do it at all and uh i i, I find that steve 
you know, he shouldn't have went back to Marvel. Go work for DC, you know, whatever. But he also did work for DC. So here we go. This is the first appearance of Wong. He's unnamed. I don't think he, you know, I, I think it's another couple. And I don't know. Well, I do know. They just made this character and then they didn't visit Doctor Strange until the fan letters came in and then they brought him back. So the next issue, there isn't a Doctor Strange count. So this guy finds Doctor Strange and, they, and they're talking. He's, he wants to hire Doctor Strange to help him. He can't sleep at night. He's being troubled. And Doctor Strange is like, hmm, enough. I know what's going on. Go to sleep tonight. He goes, how? He goes, I'm going to enter your dreams. Look, look at that. Look at I just love it. And look at this house. It's just, just that doorway, this hint of, of design in the background. You, you, you know that it's, it looks like the Adams Family House. And look at these windows. It's time for, to visit the master for whom all my powers stem. And he releases his psychic thing and flies. The master. Who, who could the master be? Why? It's the ancient one. He wasn't called the ancient one at first. The first couple of issues, he was just called the master. And Wong had no name. You know, he was just, who knows if they were even going to revisit Wong. But look at that, he flies to a hidden temple somewhere in the remote vastness of Asia. Look at that. And I don't know when they started calling it Car Cartage. Is that what they called it in, in the movies? I never heard that name before. So maybe it was just a movie invention. Or maybe it came out in modern comics that I don't know. But he, here's the ancient one. And when you're the ancient one, what do you do? You just sit. You just sit and contemplate the nature of your universe in, in your nice cushy chair. So he goes, look at that. Doesn't that look like Tilda Swanson? That looks just like Tilda Swanson. You could see the limitations of the coloring of the dot matrix. I just love that. And, and they're talking. So he, he, he's giving him a little advice what you do. Okay. And uh, so now he's back talking to, uh, you, must, you must sleep and, and have no fear. I shall, be near, I shall be nearby. I don't know what it is about you, but it gives a man a feeling of confidence. And I, and I love this. He goes to sleep and it just formed this, this pink cloud above him rising and he jumps into the into the dream and look at this 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 it's just i don't know i i i'm actually getting chills because i'm 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 a i'm a geek but this is like the first time you see all that wonderful ditko-esque extra dimensional nonsense that 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 is just so famous for doing and this is the, this is the first time you see it so cool and here he's going along this path and look at that look at that panel Tell me that's not cool. That is just so good. And no, no, stay away, please. No, not like this. Whatever's going on, you know. And you, whoever you are, why do you torment him? Well, he knows the reason why. Just all creepy. Look at that. Because he, I am the symbol of evil, the evil he has done. That is why I am chained. So if you do not believe, ask Mr. Krang. And then, so it is Doctor Strange. You have entered the dimension of dreams for the last time. Never again shall you thwart me. Nightmare, my ancient foe. So this is establishing that this isn't, you know, we don't know Doctor Strange's origin yet. We, we, it's, it's just we're, we're, we're thrown in. So he's already established. He's already met Nightmare. He's already fought Nightmare. He's entered into this dimension. So this is already an experienced Doctor Strange. This isn't his first rodeo. And look at that. You know the rules of Sorcerer Doctor Strange. Those who enter a hostile dimension must be prepared to pay for it with their lives. It's just so ominous looking. It's so creepy. And this guy's like, he mentioned Mr. Krang. So that's a, that's what it is. Doctor Strange, he must have heard it all. So he's going to pull out a gun. He's in a trance helpless. So this guy must have murdered somebody. Or I forget the exact crime, but you know he can't have a witness laying around. And now he knows why he can't sleep. So I guess he could fix it himself. Behold, Doctor Strange, you may witness your own destruction. Your mortal body is unprotected. Your life is about to be snuffed out. Nothing can save you. There is yet one who can master. Can you hear me? I need the master. He calls. Yet there's only one way to help him. Through the enchanted amulet, I must concentrate. And here, and halfway across the world, the mysterious gold amulet on Doctor Strange's chest begins to grow brighter and brighter until it slowly opens, revealing a fantastic metal eye. And such as, as no mortal has ever beheld, as, as no mortal would ever want to behold again. And suddenly from that unblinking orb, a blinding hypnotic ray shoots out, freezing the amazed human to grow on the spot, and his limbs grow strangely rigid. Look, so, so th these two, like, he was like held in sorcerer's soul, but Nightmare got distracted, and he's able to leave, made it safe, and his spirit reunites with his body, and he's like, 
I shall relieve you of both your weapon and, and your hypnotic spell. Speak only the truth. It is over. You're still alive. That means I've lost. How's a fool to come to you? I didn't suspect my dreams were caused by the many men I've ruined in business. Krang was the last of them. I robbed him, and he couldn't prove it. Now I'll confess. And you only... It will only be it'll be the only way you could ever sleep again so next issue explore the world okay so i guess next issue dr strange did show up again but uh they don't talk about his origin i think until issue 115 so yeah no letters page so they that, that was the two pages of text and just trying to be careful i actually stopped talking i got a little nervous so here we go this is strange tales 110 the very first appearance of dr strange by the wonderful team of, of Stan Lee and, and, and Steve Ditko. So good. I, I, I just loved it. So moody. So so atmospheric. Let me actually open up the comic. So uh, I'll go to the pages again while I talk about it. Oh, no. But look look at the eye. That's the, that's the eye of Agmado, not the amulet of Agmado that comes later. And notice he doesn't have a cape. He, he wears a blue cape for the first couple of issues, and then later on he... Uh, gets his red cape of levitation so all, all the stuff it's like he levels up just just so good um what else what else could i say about about this comic i, I guess i said it all just just wonderfully moody um the next next issue uh is is it the the, the spooky house oh, i love that i love that comic uh so again doctor they split the comics into uh, different stories. Strange Tales always did that, so that was nothing new. And then later on, this becomes just Strange Tales, and the covers are actually split. One side's the Human Torch, and one side's uh, Doctor Strange. The Human Torch leaves, and it becomes uh, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Doctor Strange. And uh, th I, those Nick Fury comics are just amazing. I already talked about how the Nick Fury and the, the Stranko issue of number one, so I'm not going to go off about Nick Fury. But... Uh, I always loved Doctor Strange. When I got those little editions as a kid, I was just enamored, but they are so good. You could buy a collected early issue, like the first 20 issues so of Doctor Strange, and they are essential comic book reading. Just amazing. Um, and I think Stan Lee kind of let Steve Ditko develop and work on his own, and it's, it, it's, more, it's more Ditko than, than Stan Lee, if you ask me. But uh, I could be wrong. But uh, there you go. 22 minutes. I didn't mean to babble that long. I'm trying to keep them short, but I, I, I can't. St Once I turn the camera on, I, I just stop. I just babble and babble and babble. So thanks a lot. Thanks. I appreciate you taking your time to watch my videos. Please like. And uh, I, I, I've seen from other people that they, that they said that they saw my stuff promoted. So maybe, maybe, maybe uh, perseverance will win out overall. So thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, share and share my videos if you like with a friend who may or may not like comics. Thank you. That's all I can ask. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.